Hey Love Winners, it's Lowdy6 here with another video and I gotta be totally upfront with you guys, this ain't China anymore. I actually grew up here in this beautiful state and I gotta be totally honest with you, without the ravaging forest fires that have been happening, it actually is a very, very beautiful state and that is the state of California, particularly Southern California. I actually grew up in uh, Northern California. But I'm actually here with Winston right now and we're working on something really, really cool and super important. So there's a massive announcement at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video. That's a little uh, YouTube trick I learned. It keeps the watch time up. So why the hell is my apartment in China filled with mothballs and double locked? Well, that's because my wife Vivi and I have made a conscious decision to not have our second child in China. So why might you ask? Well, the first time we had Olivia in China, there's actually an entire video about that, we were very, very worried and unnerved, but we did not have a choice. There was documents involved, there was a big money issue as well back then, and we just had to kind of cope with the situation that we were dealt. And I'm going to be honest with you, if you've never been to a Chinese hospital, you will fully understand what I mean. I mean, there's no soap in the bathrooms, for God's sakes. I mean, how are the doctors washing their hands and disinfecting themselves before touching patients? What about the people, you know, urinating or defecating in said bathroom and then walking out with that stuff on their hands and contaminating the entire place? That's kind of nitpicky stuff, but it goes much deeper than that. When women do give birth, you can expect more than eight people in the room, so there's no privacy there as well, no matter how much money you want to spend. And also, there's an, a really, really big issue, and that is the doctors and bribery. There's something called a hongbao in China, and that's a red envelope. This red envelope is usually filled with money for Chinese New Year, but it's also used to bribe doctors. And why do they do that, might you ask? That's because in China, doctors are extremely underpaid or a lot of doctors just know that there's a lot of kickbacks to be had if somebody has the money to be able to sway them to do either a better job or just not sabotage their health in general. Listen to what happened to one of Vivi's best friends. If you're not going to pay someone to do their job, they're not going to do their good job. And especially recently, like the government trying to crack down this kind of like bribery thing, that's still happening. So one of my friends, like that's why I really, really paranoid about having a kids in China. It's like one of my friend, <laughs> she claimed that she have a connection and she bribed the doctor to help her deliver it bribe all the nurses and bribe every single one she can like uh, that night that day she will get birth and then will help out literally throw out tons of tons of money and now uh, what happened her little daughter both arm is like got ripped the so one is socket it, it's off one is like because they they pull it too hard it's broken they have cracked so little newborn infant just born for a few minutes need to go to emergency room doing all those things. Meanwhile, she spent tons of money. I know the fact that that sounds really bizarre. That happens, seriously happens. I mean, like I have way more bizarre story I can tell, but I just don't want to scare out of people, but I'm terrified. Um, the reason why I gave birth in China is just out of no choice. And my parents is there. They guarantee they're like, oh my, my generate our generation and generation. We know that doctor, and uh, this relative already have a baby there. That relative have a baby there. So don't worry, it's fine. You're 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 really high level. Uh, relative already have kids over there. They are totally fine. But at the end of the day, seriously, other than bribe them, other than have a connection, like what can those people without help can do? The Chinese hospital system and medical system in general relies on a very, very poor knowledge of Western medicine. And that's not to say Western medicine is some massive cure-all, but the kind of education that goes into the usage of Western medicine, or I should say practical and safe usage of Western medicine is very poor in China. A lot of Chinese doctors will go to Chinese medicine focused schools where they'll focus on the uh, use of herbs and traditional Chinese medicine 
for even very important procedures like childbirth. So when your doctor has a focus on that and a very poor knowledge of Western medicine, you can't rely on the fact that your wife will be given proper treatment. So when you mix that into the fact that you might have to bribe the doctor to do a good job, and then you also have to worry about post-birth when you're talking about things like vaccinations, you can't even expect real ones. So I know there's a huge like anti-vaccination like movement going on, but I'm very much in favor of vaccinations. They save people's lives and everyone else should believe in that as well. It's proven science. But in China, the problem is it's not that they don't believe in vaccinations. That's not a traditional Chinese medicine value. They know that vaccinations do you know, prevent massive and very, very detrimental illnesses for children. The issue is the vaccine scandals, which we've had two of now. The first one resulted in many, many uh, Chinese babies being ill, uh, falling ill or dying. And the director that was actually responsible for the fake vaccination scandal the first time was not only kind of freed of his crimes of bribery and corruption, but then promoted. So enter act two of the, the vaccination scandal. I've actually covered this video on ADV China, so go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. But this is one of those things where when Olivia was vaccinated, and I found out about this the first time, I was utterly horrified, as would any father or mother uh, giving birth in China. And I was left in this position where I felt, it was like sleepless nights. It was almost like, how could I, when presented with a potential opportunity of not having to go through something like this, or putting, putting my daughter through something like this, why would I not take advantage of that? So I just felt guilty. I was like, were these vaccinations faulty? Were they fake? Were they counterfeit? Is my daughter gonna be safe from these potential illnesses and diseases that she should have preemptively been uh, dealt with, you know? So despite all of this, um, the first time we did our best with the money we could scrape together with the hospitals that were available to us where we lived in Huizhou. And uh, we got a VIP room. And that was, I would say 10, 10 or 15 times more expensive than what the average local would pay for going in to give birth. So we had this room where Vivi didn't have to share it with anyone and she had her own room. It was, it was moderately clean, it was okay. The nurses were kind of blasé about the whole thing. Um, and that's just the attitude towards giving birth in China. But the problem is this exorbitant fee that we paid for the VIP room didn't pertain to the actual delivery room. So I'm gonna have Vivi describe her experience in said delivery room. At that time when I have my first daughter, I get a VIP room, spend lots of money on that. So that means like I have my, I kept my privacy regularly because if without having a baby in China, I thought like I can deliver it in my own room, nice and quiet, families around, and the doctor will be there on time. Actually, stuff doesn't happen like that. First of all, I have me, my, my, my first daughter, it's like, it's around midnight. The doctor never show up. It's just a random, they call it just like the nurse help you to deliver it. They do the whole thing. So like literally, <laughs> I was just like a getting, like giving birth and get help by a random woman. It's so bizarre that you think about like in, in America, how many women will feel how really uncomfortable say, oh, I don't think so. I want my doctor to be there. No, that's not going to happen. Your doctor not going to be there, especially if they need their nap, their beauty sleep. So yeah, at that time, um, I got a VIP room, but I ended up not getting my doctor. And uh, when I, my contraction and everything, every sign said like I'm about to have a baby, I got willed into the delivery room which like I was saying like that's fine even my husband is not there I can do it that's just the way it should be right so when I show up there I need to have my epidural first so <laughs> I got well into the delivery room the whole setting is there's six to eight bed over there there's three women without curtain yelling, shouting, and screaming, and having a baby, all the blood everywhere. There was no privacy. I saw, literally saw, like, two holes, like, have a baby's head coming out. And uh, <laughs> blood is everywhere, scream, and the chaos everywhere. I was like, I still have a few more hours to go. So... <laughs> I'm already scared. It's literally to my feeling is like crap. I'm in the labor factory. Like, 
whoosh, come out one, whoosh, come out one, and then they good to go. Anyways, that's like really disturbing, and um, they don't have privacy. They don't have curtain. They <clears throat> anyway that no that memory I should never ever have that memory ever in my mind. I was terrified. I feel really lucky that I actually have the chance to give birth in America. At least I heard it's like ten times better. And uh, as long as you don't let you don't force me to see other kid pop out from their mom. <laughs> now, perhaps one of the most unnerving things about you know the delivery ward in China is that the abortion area. So pe women going in, lining up to to get abortions, basically in all stages of uh, pregnancy. I don't care where you fall on this issue, abortion. It's a little unnerving to sit in an abortion ward next to the delivery ward. So you're waiting there with your wife as she's, you know, hands on belly, you know, waiting to see the ultrasound or give birth uh, of your new child and watching women walk out of the abortion clinic in the same hospital, clutching their now empty wombs white in the face, and then watching the nurses cart out the aftermath. Uh, it sounds grim and it sounds horrific, but it's just this is the truth. China has a very, very lax attitude towards abortion. So it's not really what you want to see when celebrating a new life. And it was something that really haunts me to this day. Another factor that goes into this. So it sounds like doom and gloom and it sounds really negative, but it's no miracle that, you know, healthy babies are delivered every single day in China. The infant mortality rate's quite low in China. So obviously they do have their head on their shoulders about the simple process of, you know, normal childbirth. Uh, when complications arrive, obviously, that, that completely changes. But why would I, and that's the question I ask myself, is why would I and why would my wife, given the potential opportunity to go to my home country, where I'm from, uh, to ensure that the safe delivery of my child, why not take advantage of something like this? And I'll be honest with you, like, it, money is an issue, obviously. It's going to be very, very expensive. And healthcare in America is top top class in the world, but it is incredibly prohibitively expensive for people that, you know, are not employed traditionally in the country. So that's, you know, a, that's a very big deal that we're going to have to deal with. But why not take advantage of that for something so important, the most important experience of your entire life, the birth of your child, why not give them that opportunity? Why not give them a little one up, you know, without the potential risk of having to bribe doctors and, and all that kind of nonsense that goes into giving birth in China? So after this project that Winston and I are working on here in California, I'm going to head back to my home state of New York uh, with my wife, and we'll be celebrating Christmas and around the exact same time the birth of my new child. We've named her Lucia. Um, I want you guys all there for the ride. You guys were there for the last ride. It was super fun, super harrowing. This time should be a lot less harrowing, but I, I hope you guys have uh, shared joy in this experience. It's going to be super fun. So the real question is, and I think you guys would probably go down in the comments and ask me this if I didn't address it now is, will I continue living in China? And that question really can't be answered properly, but I can tell you this, it's getting really rough in China. It's getting difficult to justify living there. It's getting difficult to come to terms with the fact that maybe the country that I fell in love with isn't going to be fair to me and my family. And it hurts and it sucks. But you know what? It doesn't mean that I have to give up on the entire country. What it does mean is that this is just a new chapter. It's just a way to move on. It's a way to continue growing and experiencing new things. And that doesn't mean I'm going to leave China permanently. That means I'm going to do it in a smarter way. That means I'm going to, to film there. It means I'm going to create content there. It means I'm going to work on bigger and bigger projects. There's a whole world out there. And it would be a shame to pigeonhole myself and for Winston as well to pigeonhole ourselves into one constantly evolving and disappointing phenomenon that is China. We want to continue to grow with the country, but we're a little concerned about where that country is actually going. So I'll leave you guys with this. This is just the beginning of a new chapter. And for all you guys that have been there since day one, I mean, you watch me as like an immature 20 something year old grow up through this channel. Um, through all the trials and tribulations, through all the adventures that we've had, I feel like with the kind of person that I am, it would be a shame to stop doing what I'm doing. So let's say this, this is going to be the next era of adventure. It might involve a family, it might involve two kids, it might involve 
me and Winston going to China once in a while to film. It might involve us going to many countries around the world to film. It might just be the fact that we need to open our eyes to other things. And I can't wait to do that. I want to say thank you to the patrons out there, to be honest. They are the only reason that this has been a reality. The only way that this has been able to happen. So thank you to all you guys that have created a community and dialogue on, on patreon.com slash 6 You guys are awesome. And for a massive, huge update on what Winston and I have come up with, go over to youtube.com slash ADVChina and watch the video that came out at the exact same time as this one. I think you guys are going to be pretty pumped, just like we are. I want to say thank you so much, Lao Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget, new Lao 6 video every single Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. New ADV China video every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a new Serpent's Day video every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you there.